Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. It's a free website for everything Photoshop and Lightroom and all things associated with it. In this video, we're gonna be making this intro to a video based on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Now, it's not exactly the same, and it may not be something that you particularly want to do yourself, but there should be some tips and tricks along the way that will help you in other projects. So let's jump in and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop and I'm gonna get my footage. If I come down to my finder here and then bring on Adobe Stock and bring it down. There's my piece of footage. Now if I press play, you'll see that this goes on for quite some time. The lady twirls around and starts walking away a bit more and then decides to do another little twirl and then walks a little bit further. And we don't need all that. All I need is just the first twirl. So I'm gonna click stop on that and then bring my playhead back and I'm just gonna start it where she looks round. There we go. Trim this down by clicking on the end and dragging and then have a look, twirly twirl and then looks and smiles, good. I'll go with that. I can trim this by bringing this end down as well. There we go. I've got three seconds and 12 frames. So about three and a half seconds. Then I want a little freeze frame of this young lady and I actually want it to be that frame. And that's really easy. All I've got to do is come up to File and Export and then quick export as JPEG. If it's not a JPEG, you can export as and export it as a JPEG. If you're using Photoshop Pre-CC, you're gonna to need to save for web and save it as a JPEG. So there we go, I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. It's gonna ask me what I want to call it. I'm gonna call it freeze frame. I've already got one sitting there. I'm gonna replace that. And sure enough, there we go, we're all saved. I'm gonna go ahead and go and grab that and drop it down onto my document. You can see it's got a cross to it. That means it's a smart object. That's absolutely fine. I can just click the tick. Now, because it's put this into the video group, it means I've got the video and then the freeze frame, and that would work just fine. I've got no problem with that. But just to keep it a bit simpler for me, I'm gonna take the freeze frame and bring it outside of the video group. That way then I've got a clear indication of where one stops and another one begins. That's just for me. Okay, just a little bit of housekeeping. I can go to the video group and I can twirl that closed. Now what I need to do first is to desaturate this. So I'm gonna use an adjustment layer. I'm gonna to go to my adjustment layers here and choose hue saturation. And then when I click on that, I can just bring down the saturation there to my desired level. Now in just a couple of minutes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start colorizing this layer, which means I could do that here, but again, I'm gonna keep things all nice and separate. I just wanna keep things so I can go back really easily and change them. But I could click the colorize button and do that here if I really wanted to. Now you notice that it's made this hue saturation from the beginning of the clip to the end. So I'm gonna trim that down to the beginning of the freeze frame. There we go, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. So if I play that now, we can see that we have twirly twirl and then a desaturation. But it's a little bit too harsh, really. I need that just to ramp in a little bit of a transform across the two. And what I'm gonna do is bring that back, the playhead to the beginning of the hue saturation. Then if I twirl this open, you'll see that I can animate different aspects of this layer, including the opacity of it. So I'm just gonna nudge this up just a few frames and then say I want to keyframe the opacity. So that's a keyframe of the opacity of this layer at 100%. If I then take it back to the beginning of this and I bring the opacity right the way down, you'll see then that it puts in a keyframe for me. Now the opacity of that layer is at 0% and it ramps up to 100%. If I just scrub through, you'll be able to see how that works. Nice and slowly, there we go, we lose the saturation. Okay, let's play that through, make sure I've got my timing about where I want it to be, and the desaturation, good. Okay, now the problem is, is that the lady's being desaturated as well, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go back onto my freeze frame here and make a quick selection of the lady. There we go quick indeed. I can make a bit of a refine edge on there. If uh, you're doing this yourself, then you may want to do this a little bit, uh, a little bit more carefully, but I'm gonna be as quick as I can. There we go. And then just on this layer, fill that with black in the 
a mask for that. Black's my background color, so I'm gonna press Control or Command Backspace. So now I've got desaturation everywhere except on the lady. There we go, that's okay, that'll do me fine. Control or Command D to deselect the selection there. All right, let's go back a bit and see how that's working. Press play, 2012, desat, good. All right, let's add a little bit of colorization. Again, we're gonna use another adjustment layer. Let's bring that to the back to the beginning. And we're gonna go for solid color. I'm gonna choose a nice blue color, somewhere around here, that'll do. Click OK. And I'm gonna put this into soft light, just to blend it down. It's looking good. Again, I don't want it to be a just a slap-on effect. If I play that through, you can see that there's no blue, no blue, blue. I want that again to ramp down to have a nice transform between the two. Now there's a little bit of an anomaly here, um, and we're going to encounter this a couple of times during this video. But you have to do certain things in certain orders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twirl this open. You can see that I can do the opacity again. What I want to do is make a direct copy of these. So I'm going to draw around these two. I've actually made a marquee around those two keyframes. Couldn't see it, but I did actually do that. Then if I go back to create an opacity keyframe, right click and paste. Now if I would have created that first keyframe first and then copied and then gone back to paste, it wouldn't work. There'd be no paste option there available for me. So you have to do it in that order. And the anomaly that we're going to come across a few more times is that marquee. So you're drawing a marquee around it. It actually does exist, but uh, you can't see it. So now we have a desaturation and that color blue all being added nice and gently. I've already made a mask once before, so I can press the Alt key and click down on the mask and then drag that up onto my color fill. When I let go of the mouse, you can see it says, do I want to replace it? Yes, I do. There we go. So now I've got the blue and the desaturation coming in together and at the same rate. There we go. But it's not affecting the lady. I think that blue's a little bit strong. I want to be back on this keyframe, this second keyframe, and if I navigate using these arrows, I can make sure that I get it bang on that keyframe and just reduce the opacity of that blue just a little bit, maybe around the 75% mark, It'd be good. So there we go. Let's look at that one more time, just to see it in context, 2012, there we go. Okay, good, I like that. I'm gonna twirl these closed. Now what I want to do is I want to add a bar with uh, her name on it. So the first things first, let's add a bar. I'm gonna create the bar, and I'm gonna choose the color. Now, I want the same color as the uh, color that I've added to the background. So if I click on this little swatch here, then on the document, then come over, 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 with my mouse still click down onto my swatch here, I can pick that same color. There we go, click OK. Somehow I've managed to lose my, uh, my document there. Let's go back. There we go. All right, let's create that bar. You notice I'm starting outside the document and going outside on the other side, just to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. That's looking good. I want this to start after the keyframe finishes on the color fill and the hue saturation. So I can just line this up with my playhead there and then just bring that across. It doesn't matter if it's not exact, but somewhere close would be nice. All right, let's just bring that down. Just keep it the same length, good. Now I'm gonna put some text on there. So I'm gonna get the text tool. And I would normally tell people to go inside the shape and start typing inside the shape and it will constrain to the shape and all those kind of things. But actually in this case, again, I'm keeping things all separate. So I'm gonna click off and I'm gonna type the lady. There we go. And then move this into position. Now I can move this right into the middle horizontally because I've got my smart guides there, which are telling me that, yep, you've hit the horizontal between the two. Good. Now what I need to do is to move these into position. Now I'm gonna add a mask to these, but here's another anomaly. If I added the mask, copied the mask to these, and then adjusted them, it's gonna take the mask with it, even if they're unlinked, and you'll see what I mean by unlinked in just a second. But even if they're unlinked, it still moves one of them, which is really frustrating. So I'm gonna select both of them and then control or command T to transform and then just rotate this a bit, 
Brilliant. So you can see now why I left myself a little bit of wiggle room. And that's looking good just about there. All right, click the tick. So now I've got the uh, lady and the bar going across. So now I want to add uh, the mask to this. So again, Alt, click, drag, Alt, click, drag, and there we go, I've got my bar going behind her. Now I could have done this, we've got the freeze frame when she's got her arms spread out and had the bar coming up and over the top of her arm, a little bit of extra mask in there, didn't want to make you sit through that, but it's certainly a possibility. All right, next, what I want to do is I want to animate the bar and the text. What I need to do is add another mask. And of course, I've already got the mask of the lady. So what I can do here is I can put the text and the bar into another group. So I'm gonna select them both. I'm gonna press Alt and click on the new group icon down here. Press Alt will allow me then to name this. I'm gonna name it text. Click OK. And now I've got them both in a group. However, I can now add a mask to the group. I'm gonna do that just by clicking on the icon here and you'll notice I get a white mask and that's what I want. I want this all to be white, but then I'm gonna hide this. So let's just uh, twirl this open and see where all the different keyframes are. That's good, that's about where I want to start. Then on the mask itself, I'm going to press Control or Command Backspace to fill it with black and hide everything on this layer. Now what I've done is I've created a black rectangle on a white mask. So it's the black rectangle and it's got white all the way around it, which means if I move the black part, it will bring the white part into view. So if I animate the mask, then I should animate a reveal. So I'm gonna click the link here just to unlink it. And then I'm gonna twirl this open as a group and I can then choose to animate the layer mask position. There we go. So at the start, it's off the screen. And then if I bring that up a little bit and then make sure I'm on the mask, if I click, I'm gonna press shift just to make sure I'm going in a straight line. I can then drag this across and you can see over in my layers panel how I'm dragging white in and black off, which means I'm revealing this layer. There we go. So between those two keyframes, you'll see that that has now been animated on. Good, easy as that. Now what I want to do is I want to actually have the lady not animated in with that, but appear afterwards. So down here, you can see inside this group, I can still get to the bits and bobs for the lady, including you'll notice a little bit of a transform and opacity, and those are the two that I'm going to use. Now I want this to happen quite early on, sort of about here. But if I started messing about now, I wouldn't see it all because of the layer mask. So I'm gonna come up here a little bit just to create the keyframes and I'm gonna drag the keyframes back again. So the first thing I want to do is do a transform. So let's go on a little bit and click the transform. Say I want to animate this and just there is where I want it to be at the end. Then I'm gonna come forward a few frames I'm going to press Control or Command T to transform, Shift, then we'll constrain the proportions, Alt to transform from the middle, click and drag out, so then it's nice and big, and click the tick. So now between those two keyframes, it's gonna go smaller and go to the right place. Okay, let's make sure that I'm on that keyframe. And I'm gonna animate the opacity, so right at the second one, the opacity is 100%. But at the first one here, the opacity there is going to be zero. So now between those two, I go from zero to 100%. There we go, that was easy enough. Let's uh, marquee all of those. Again, you can't see the marquee, but there you go. And then I can drag them as a job lot all the way back to the beginning of this. So mm, don't worry one at the beginning. Let's have that coming in here. So let's uh, take these along and then let's bring that along and so there we go I'm starting to lose my voice now there we go we've got that going on good i can make these nice and shorter there's one and there's the others good nice and these two as well and then we've got our finished piece all right let's just bring that down a little bit further good all right that down 
OK, let's see what's going on now. So I press play, and she twirls, she twirls, and then we've got desaturation, and then we have our effects. There we go, all done. Now I could put a bit more of effect on there, maybe a colour vignette, something like that, and animate it exactly the same. But I've got the basic premise for my little intro session. I'm Eric Rano, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and don't forget to go over to tipsquirrel.com for even more Photoshop and Lightroom loveliness from me and a whole host of other writers and presenters. Until next time, bye bye for now.